So we're gonna go ahead and do a lower anterior preparation. This is actually, since we've made a design change, I can actually show you here. We broaden the buccal lingual dimension of these crowns so that they would require less reduction compared to our previous version crowns. So um, really they don't require a lot of reduction at all. Normally with the other teeth, we use the different burrs um, for depth cutting and also uh, for subgingival reduction. But because the lower anterior is such a small tooth, um, really I do the whole thing just with the number four burr or the flame diamond. And that's, that's the only tooth I, I do that on. So really as far as like your incisal reduction, um, I make a depth cut the thickness of the widest portion of this burr. So I'm gonna go ahead and just prep down. I'll do this so I can show you on this video. Maybe a little bit more there. Normally if I was do this, doing this in clinic, it'd be a lot faster, but you can kind of see my reduction here. Um, but basically it's the width of the widest part of this diamond right here. And then once you have that little depth cut there, then all you need to do is just smooth it off so that it's even. And it's not very much reduction. And that's about it. So you can see your incisal reduction. It ends up being about a millimeter or so. A little bit less than what you do with the other teeth. The, your upper incisors, you go between a millimeter and a millimeter and a half. This one, all you need is really about a millimeter. And then your axial reduction, you're gonna just, I just like to break contact so that I can do a nice little circumferential reduction there. So I'll just go in and I'll break contacts, being careful not to nick the adjacent teeth if possible. This is really one of my favorite preps. And then once I have that done, then I'm gonna go ahead and just go around the tooth. Starting to do my axial reduction. Once again, key point, you wanna keep your burr straight up and down. You really don't wanna have any taper, the same as with all the teeth. And then once your axial reduction starts to take shape, then you're gonna to start to slowly, incrementally bury the tip of that burr below the tissue and do your subgingival reduction. Remember, as before we learned, your subgingival reduction is gonna be about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters, which is more than what most people think they need to do. And that's sometimes where people actually get hung up is they don't do a deep enough reduction. So we're just gonna go around that tooth a bunch of times. Um, once I do my axial reduction, I'll go back and I do a little bit more on the lingual right in here, just to make sure that I have enough reduction on the lingual there. And I'll just kind of bury that subgingival again. I push that tip subgingival and that is it. That's my lower uh, incisor reduction. So you can see our completed preparation there. Once again, you want a thin incisal edge that follows the arch form. Same as with the upper incisors as the lower incisors, you want a thin incisal edge that follows the arch form. If we look at this from the occlusal, you can see that my buccal reduction, I might need to take that in a little bit, that second plane of reduction. We still do that slightly on the lower incisors. So I'm just gonna go back and just roll that in just a hair. Now we have our thin incisal edge that follows the arch form here. Perfect, and we can try our tooth on. And if the shoe fits, wear it. Dink. And that should fit perfectly. Right. And there we go. There's our completed crown preparation.